Trins Trains Productions proudly presents an original documentary The World of Water Stainmore Railway Company Kirby Stephen East Chapter 1 Bricks for the Tank House from the ex Stainmore structure Our story begins in 1966 following the closure of the Stainmore route to passengers in 1962. It was in this year that the magnificent Mousegill viaduct was blown up as part of an army training exercise. However, all the stone from the viaduct was acquired by the Walton family at Calver Farm at Barris. In June 1968, ex-LNER class J21, number 65033, had been stored at Darlington Works for over five years, following its withdrawal from traffic. It was saved from scrapping at the 11th hour by Dr Frank Atkinson CBE, the founding director at Beamish. As a result, the locomotive was subsequently moved to some Consett Steelworks, County Durham, for safekeeping. From there, the locomotive moved again via the Tanfield Railway to Beamish in 1975. As far as we can establish from the available records, upon leaving the steelworks, the locomotive was accompanied by the remains of one of the water cranes, the vertical section, but the missing short horizontal section and the swan neck from Consett. Beamish subsequently arranged a swap with the North Norfolk Railway NNR for one of their artefacts, which saw the remains of the crane moved down to Norfolk. In, in the end, though, the NNER decided to install a replica Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway water crane. This meant that the remains of the concert water crane were now surplus to their requirements. Fortunately, however, our colleague Julian Burley, BEM, chairman of the NNR, knew that we were looking for just such an item. Julian most generously arranged for the remains of the concert crane to be donated to Stainmore Railway Company. The crane arrived on site in October 2014. In June 2007, SRC were contacted by the owners of Barra Station, located between KSE and Stainmore Summit. This was regarding the original stage in waiting room, as the back wall was in a dangerous state. Wishing not to de simply demolish the structure, it was offered to SRC so that the materials could be reused at a later stage. After some thought, the offer was accepted and the daunting task of taking the structure down began. Brick by brick. An extensive record of the building was completed for future reference and with the assistance from Paul Thompson, the job was eventually completed. In the end, the bricks were used to, to build the tank house. A potential location for the waiting room has been identified and it is the intention to rebuild the structure in the future. Chapter 2 A Northeastern Railway Water Tank and Associated Metalwork In late 2013, Rob Murray stumbled across a photo of a complete but totally abandoned Northeastern Railway water tower at Warham. Nick Catford, who runs the disused stations website, had cited the site, which also comprises three nearby cottages occupied by tenants of the landowner, despite its isolation. Nick suggested that we write a letter to the landowner and leave it with one of the tenants. 
In February 2014, we received a reply from Lord Middleton, Birdsall Estate, generously offering us the tank and associated metalwork if we could get it. On the initial visit, it was discovered that the 2,200 gallon tank was still full of water. Fire hoses and a pump eventually managed to empty the tank despite continuous breakdowns. The bottom 10 inches of the tank were filled with degraded vegetation, removed by three volunteers with buckets slopping out the tank. The flanges securing various sections of the pipework to the tank were uncovered. Unfortunately, everything was seized solid. We eventually restored to grinding off the nuts and driving the bolts out with a large hammer, not something to be forgotten in a hurry. But nothing is as simple as it seems, as not only was the tank connected to a water supply, the supply itself was still alive. The tank and three other cottages were supplied by a local spring with no separate tank to shut off. Thankfully, the estate agreed to go in and isolate the tank for us, which was hugely appreciated. With the tank now empty and disconnected, the ladder, operating valve, etc. were removed for use at KSC. The next visit saw a gang of volunteers undertake major clearance work to allow access for a wagon with high ab. Despite a solid 24 hours of rain, causing the initial lift to be cancelled, on the 26th of November 2016, the tank made it to KSC. Finally, after a major effort by all parties involved, we now had a genuine NER water tank and associated metalwork for reuse at KSC. Chapter 3 a North Eastern Railway, water crane operating, handle and column. In early 2014, a group of volunteers were at Beamish Museum to meet with Paul Jarman, the keeper of transport, in relation to a project involving NER bogey stores van number 5523. Whilst being shown around the site, Paul pointed out to us a water crane recently obtained from North, North Road, Darlington. With the water crane was a genuine NER operating handle and column for a water crane, two items we were missing for our project at KSE. Paul informed us that these items were now surplus to requirements as their plans had changed, so a deal with him for them was done on the spot. They arrived at KSE in January 2016. Chapter 4. The Project Part 1. Planning We now had all the items we required to develop our own genuine North Eastern Railway watering facilities at KSE. The plan would be to build a replica of the Warham Tank House using the original North Eastern Railway bricks from Barris. Construct a lintel on top of the brick tower using stone recovered from Mousekill Viaduct. And fit the reconditioned tank, support beam, ladder and operating valve from Warham. The remains of the cast iron water crane would be repaired and a new horizontal section plus swan neck would be manufactured. Part 2 the tank house. Although actual construction commenced in October 2015, with the foundations being dug by WPS, volunteers had been busy. We had calculated that some 5,000 bricks would be required for the tower and a regular team spent many hours cleaning them. The work was also hampered by the appalling winter weather. Storm Desmond caused serious damage to the station roof. Work continued under the direction of Paul Thompson during the winter months, as and when the weather allowed. Once the brickwork reached head height, our good friends Bell and Prime erected scaffolding so that work could continue. Spaces for two windows and a doorway appeared and window sills were fitted. 
The great day came when the very last brick was cleaned, the honour being given to volunteer Robin Haywood and installed in the tower. Farmer Graham Walton had spent many hours carefully cutting sections of stone from Mousekill Viaduct to exact sizes. The freshly cut stone was then carefully bedded down on the mortar on top of the brickwork using scaffolding, block and tackle by volunteers. Whilst this was going on, all the metalwork was chop blasted by Neil Robinson followed by the application of several coats of two-pack paint by the volunteers with a 25-year guarantee. The main support beam for the base of the tank was then installed and a metal plate manufactured by Dean Nelson was placed around the lintel to protect the brickwork. The big day finally came to make the structure whole. The reconditioned North Eastern Railway tank was lifted into place on top of the tower by Neil McQuirter. Period windows and a door manufactured by John Neil Thompson were installed. Part 3 The Water Crane A number of specialist organisations have been consulted about repairs to the cast iron water crane and the manufacture of missing components. Eventually we selected Slindon Services, Derbyshire, to undertake the repairs and Casting Services Engineering Limited, Leicestershire, to manufacture the missing horizontal section and swan neck. David Russell and his expert team at Slindon soon made good progress on the remains of the crane. The first items to be worked on were the cracked base and broken fire basket which needed a number of new patterns. These were then cast and stitch welded to the remains of the basket. Today it's nearly impossible to tell that it's been repaired. The elbow which takes the water supply into the crane and the main valve were both long gone. The new elbow was manufactured and a specialist bronze valve was chosen for improved reliability and durability. These items were then reinstated, pressure tested and returned to KSE. The vertical section and counterbalance weight were shot blasted and painted. A new top bracing and finial were also manufactured. 
A number of various photographs and drawings were consulted in regards to the exact detail of the missing horizontal section and swan neck. It was clear that these tapered in comparison to the vertical section. We eventually settled on an 8 inch diameter for the horizontal section and 7 inch diameter for the swan neck. David kindly undertook some calculations for us based on data provided by Dennis Hewitt at Casting Services to ensure the structure was balanced. This showed the counterbalance was slightly too light so a small quantity of lead was added to ensure the structure's safety. Dennis Hewitt and colleagues were tasked with manufacturing the missing sections. Good progress was made with the 53 inch horizontal section. A pattern and new casting was soon produced and sent to David. However, the elaborate swan neck proved to be more of a difficult casting. This inevitably set the time scale back a little, but having got this far, we could wait a little longer. With all this going on off-site, the volunteers at KSC were busy preparing the foundations for the water crane. These were again excavated by our friends at WPS and with a repaired crane base plus elbow on site, we prepared a structure of timber shuttering, dubbed the coffin. This was then inserted into the foundation trench, weighed down to prevent it rising, and concrete poured round it, which worked very well. Once the concrete had been allowed to cure for two weeks, a structure to support scaffolding poles, block and tackle were erected by volunteers. The crane base was then carefully lowered over the studs we had inserted into the concrete. The base was now ready for the return of the vertical and horizontal sections of the crane. Part 4. The Pipework Excavating the trench for the pipework from the tank house to the crane was again undertaken by our friends at WPS. After consulting various specialist companies, we chose to use 4-inch diameter plastic pipe with a chemical seal for durability. The pipe was then inserted in the trench, packed particularly from underneath with 10mm chippings to prevent the pipe from sagging over time. The trench was then backfilled with the spoil excavated from it. The pipework salvaged from Warham was in quite poor condition, so new pipework and valves were purchased. This was expertly bent to shape and installed by two of our volunteers, Ari Beekman, engineer, and Bob Tyson, ex-Barrow Shipyard. In order to ensure that we could fully empty the system in winter to prevent any frost damage, we also inserted drain valves in strategic locations. In the pipe feeds from both the mains to the tank and from the tank to the crane. Part 5. Grant support, total costs and volunteer hours. The total monetary cost of the project was £54,082. Three grant applications were prepared and submitted with all three being successful. The Her Heritage Lottery Fund Sharing Heritage Scheme approved a £10,000 grant. Ken Hull Trust and the Ironmongers Company also generously provided substantial sums to manufacture the missing sections of the water crane and to repair the fire basket respectively. The remaining cost £33,673 was funded from our own resources. Additionally, some 1,082 hours of unskilled volunteer labour and 1,004 hours of skilled volunteer labour were expended on the physical work at KSE. 
Using the standard HLF rate of £50 a day for unskilled labour and £150 a day for skilled labour, this equates to a total of £22,592. Many more hours were spent during the planning and fundraising phase off-site and these figures do not include all the work at Warham and Barris. With all the donated materials such as the water tank, crane, bricks etc. being valued at a further nominal £9,700, the total cost of the project equates to £89,374.